Well, welcome to another RD Works Learning Lab. Today you've caught me preparing a piece of stainless steel to simulate something that I, it's a, it's a phenomenon that I came across while I was using the Bodor machine in Florida. Now, the Bodor machine had a stainless steel bed with a surface on it that was very similar to that. Today could be a very short session or it might turn out to be interesting because I'm going to try and replicate this strange phenomenon that I came across whilst using that machine. We had a few problems with the um, honeycomb bed because basically the bed of the machine just had a series of holes in it, not many holes, and the honeycomb bed sat on top, so consequently there was very, very little airflow through the honeycomb bed. So there were times when I wanted to make things using the machine, and so I decided that what I would do, I would put some acrylic straight down onto the bed. That was basically an 80 watt machine, which was probably giving about 70 watts down here at the work surface. Now, this machine, is a 70 watt machine at the tube and it's probably giving me 55 or 60 watts down here so it's a slightly um, lower power machine but I have one major advantage the lens in here is a one and a half inch lens which means it produces a much higher energy density at the surface whereas the one I was using in uh, the Bodor machine had a two inch lens on it <laughs> first of all I say I want to show you I don't want to show you I want to find out for myself whether or not I can replicate this condition. So I've just put a little test program in here which is a nice simple little test program, nothing more than a square. The one thing I do remember at the time, I was running the um, machine slower than I would normally run it for a particular thickness because I thought I want it, I'd got a quite a complex pattern that I wanted to cut out and I didn't want it to fail. So I was basically using more power than I required to cut through the acrylic. Now this is about 1.82 millimeter material, something like that, around about two millimeter material. And I would normally want to cut this probably at 15, 20, maybe even 22 millimeters a second. I'm going to try cutting this very slowly at about eight millimeters a second. Uh, <clears throat> I've got the power set to about 65, which is probably as I said, maybe 55 watts down at the surface here. And I have my focus set very slightly low. Now I need to turn the extraction on. And you'll notice the condensate forming underneath here. You can see the condensate forming underneath. Now, that might be too fast, but let's just have a quick look. No, it's not too fast. Well, I think you can probably see the condensate, the, the methyl acrylate condensate that's formed on the surface here. And I think you can also see the black mark that's come around there that matches the cut. Now, my immediate reaction when I saw this on the Bodor machine is, oh my God, what have I done to their, le their lovely table? Because I've got this pattern of cuts all over the table. <laughs> Not a problem. I'll go and get some acetone and we'll clean it off. Now I am getting worried. Now, isn't that strange? I can't get it off. Now, isn't that strange? I'm glad that's worked because I couldn't get theirs off either. So you can see how much effort I'm putting in to removing that mark and that tells me that I must basically, and it's still there, look, I must basically have cut into the surface somehow. Now that's supposedly an impossibility with 60 or 50 watts to cut into the surface of stainless steel. And so I was wondering whether or not 
And I didn't get a chance to test it there, but this is what we're going to do today. We're going to experiment a little bit further now and find out just what's happening. Is it the, the methyl acrylate solution that's the condensate that's formed under there that's somehow producing some magical etching properties. Is that an, an etchant of some sort? I, I, I have to say I'm lost for words because I don't know. I've thought about it quite a bit since and I've been really keen to get back and try it on this machine. Well, now I've tried it and seen it for myself, perhaps the first thing we should do is to try it slower. So. I've got that running at 8 millimetres a second. I'm going to change this down to 4 millimetres a second. Again, I think you can probably see the blob of methyl acrylate forming underneath the surface there. To say I call it methyl acrylate, but I don't know whether that's the correct technical term for the condensate. But as far as I'm aware, it's it's the raw material, one of the raw materials from which this acrylic is made from. It breaks down and condenses. You can see it's a horrible sticky liquid. So let's have a look. Let's get a little bit closer and have a look what we've done this time. I have to say that looks a little bit more um, a little bit more intense and certainly a acetone is not going to take it off. So let's try mechanical abrasion. That's having some effect, but not a lot. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of this that this may be a long session or it may be a short session. Stainless steel has got quite good reflective properties. And what I'm now going to do is I'm going to leave the speed exactly the same and I'm going to just carry out a bit of a daring test because potentially the laser beam is going to hit the surface and it could reflect back up and do something nasty to my lens. It's a risk I'm taking and I'd rather take that risk than you take the risk. So let's see what happens. As soon as the light goes out, I should know I haven't got a lens. I'm slightly lost for words. I shouldn't be able to do that. I can feel that that has cut into the surface. Now how on earth does that happen? Well I can only believe that basically it's the crystal structure of the material that causes the reflection and from my metal cutting experience days when I used to try and cut aluminium and brass with one of these machines, a much more, a much more powerful machine, I mean we're talking about 3 kilowatts not 60 watts, um, it was a very dangerous practice and if you could get the metal to melt, basically you change completely the crystal structure of the material and then it would start to absorb energy. But of course while it was in this solid state it would be reflecting. But if for a moment you could get it to absorb enough heat to melt, then you could get it you could get a cut to occur. Now even with 60 watts, I'm wondering whether something similar is happening on here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to have a look at it under a microscope. You can just see there some what look like weld marks running along the line and that definitely is cutting into the surface. The black line is because the oxygen in the air has mixed with the melt that's occurred 
and produced uh, an oxide. Well, I'm really a little bit lost for words because that's a totally unexpected result. Now, I certainly wouldn't have experimented on mirror polished stainless steel to start with because that is even more reflective and I stand a high, an even higher risk of popping my lens with the reflected energy. But on the other side of that sheet, I happen to have mirror polished stainless. I'm just hesitating for a minute because I'm wondering whether my man parts are big enough. It's a lens. It can be replaced. Same settings, four millimeters a second, 65% power. If the light goes out, the lens is gone. Just clean the surface with some acetone. Oh, wowee, that looks quite nice. Again, we'll go and look at that under the uh, under the microscope. And that's what it looks like on a mirror polished stainless steel. Now you can see round the edge of the cut there that slightly yellowy look. That's obviously the oxidation band that occurs with the different colours as you start cooling down. Now I've had to turn the microscope lights off and rely on just natural light here because as soon as I turn the microscope lights on, <laughs> as you can see, it just kills the picture. But in natural light you can see the, uh, if you like, the burn, the weld lines. Now you remembered earlier that I mentioned the fact that the vertical line was wider than the horizontal line. Well if you look at the shape of the microscope ring in the background you'll see that it's oval. So I think it's a distortion of the picture and not a difference in the width of the line. So turning the image through 90 degrees and we get the same result and it just verifies that it is the microscope that's distorting the, the vertical line. Now you may have detected a certain amount of trepidation in some of the things that I've been doing today. That's because my background in metal cutting laser machines, uh, where I have to admit I've screwed up a couple of very expensive lenses in my time, trying to cut aluminium and brass, both of which are highly reflective materials. Now, as I've mentioned before, highly reflective doesn't mean to say shiny surface. It means crystallographically they are reflective. But once you can break the surface of the material down to a different crystal structure, i.e. you can melt the surface, the crystal structure changes completely and it starts to absorb energy. Perhaps 60 watts is not enough to reflect and damage the lens, whereas 3 kilowatts is a hell of a lot of energy to reflect and be absorbed by a lens. So maybe I was being a bit over cautious today but um, those sorts of expensive experiences stick with you for a lifetime. <laughs> Thanks for joining me on this little journey of discovery and I hope that some of the things that we've looked at today may well stick in your toolbox of experience as well and you might be able to use it at some stage in the future. See you next time.